we've noted that you have given full information to the, uh, to the planning commission and, and our false document, and therefore you had to, to um, actually meet with the community people um, when you have all this, and you said you, when you guys have said you have already done that, when you did not, but you met with a person, how they call it. And uh, he was very disappointed at you guys because you guys made a statement like you have seen him several times and you did not. So had that issue been straightened out? You have to be specific. I know. You had a meeting with Kelly Cullen about twice last year, I believe it was, or something to that effect. And uh, you and the planning commission told him you have, you have seen, you have talked with the community several times when you did not speak to them several times. And about this project? Yeah, about this project. And uh, and I just want to know how that have that issue been straightened out. Well, we're we're here and talking to forward. you. Yeah, but I mean, you could be saying it. I don't mean things are straightened out. So, uh, so, no, it, it's just Reggie. What it is, um, they're in the process of doing the community outreach now. Um, so I, I can I can dig it here now. Well, yeah, but this, this is what the time period from that documents become available in the hearing. So that's what that time period is yeah. for. Is community outreach. Well, at that time, when, when, he, when he turned in such a said document, it was, it, was, it, was, it was not a true statement, as it was said by, by the head of the TNC at that time. Well, documents come from the planning department. They don't come from the, from the developer. They come from the planning department. But they had to turn it in, don't they? The planning department investigates. Well, it was, All they do is basically turn basic information over. I'm not aware of false well, documents that well, we've supplied. Document. I, I use the word document rather than mix. Only because but I haven't heard of anything else. But I just think I've asked this question anyways to clear from yeah, no. we'll If we've produced false documents, I'd like document. to know about it. Well, actually, I have the papers. I have a piece of paper there where it was written out of this particular fact. Um, from, from, from the previous meetings, it was handed out um, from the person who was in charge of running that whole deal. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Okay. okay. I know um, if you could do me one favor. Sure. And get me a copy of the uh, the neg deck. You're on a neg deck. Uh, it was a neg deck. Right. You can give me a copy of the neg deck. Sure. Mm -hmm. I have the case number too, if you'd like it. Okay. So it, with the case number, that'll all be there. Yeah. So I'll make that. Uh, what I'll do? I'll put I'll pull my um, address on this card. What's interesting is is one of the parcels is a downtown zone, and one is an RC4, and they're right next to each other. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so it gets a little, a little yeah. Yeah, confusing. I yeah. have I have one last question. The four hotels that originally were talking to you about moving their people into your place, what decision did they make about that? You want me to take five or ten minutes? I can explain the whole uh, hotel, residential hotel deal. Uh huh. Yeah, so, San Francisco has uh, rooms classified as different things in all these residential hotels. Uh huh. Um, in the tourist area, there are tourist hotels, and then there are non-tourist hotels, resident hotels. Yes. If you stay longer than 30 days in a hotel, any hotel could be the Hilton here. You have rights to stay. You have rights to stay, and that's why the Hilton moves you out. Mm -hmm. If you're paying $500 a day, they still move you out, right? Because they don't want to be subject to uh, rent control. Uh, now, uh, now, these four hotels let, want let me, to turn. Let me just keep going. Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> if you stay a minimum of seven days, but not 30 days, you're in a different classification. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're still a residential hotel, but you don't have any uh, rent control rights. Mm -hmm. That's the way the law is written. Mm -hmm. As it turns out, uh, a good deal of the uh, tourist hotels in this neighborhood and actually south of Market mm -hmm. have, over time, just kept to that seven days to 28 day period for all of their tenants. So that over the years, even though they're classified as residential hotel units, they've never been used as residential hotel units in practice. Well, yeah, I know some people that okay. lived there for so, years. Okay. So when the hotel operators came to uh, Forge, they said, uh, as a bookkeeping thing, we'd like to get these all as tourist hotels because that's what they're acting as in real life. That's what the code says. and. <coughs> following the code. 
the tenants, uh, and there were about 20 of them who actually do have rent control, would have come into our uh, project as rent control tenants, and they would have gotten a brand new unit. Uh, uh -huh. And much better, if you go into some of these, much, much better than where they're living right now. That deal was quashed. So that's that's not part of this application. Well, yeah, but what are they going to do about it that's, since they're stuck That's now. their their hotel operators. They'll keep renting a minimum of seven days so they're not no, charged. No, no, what I mean is in the units that they have already with people actually living there, and I know one, this is how I know this stuff, mm -hmm. she has lived there for more than eight years, mm -hmm. and she, you know, she's, she's under rent control in that, her unit. So will those... Landlords, they can't get her out now, supposedly, right. but they want to run as completely tourist hotels, but they can't because they say one or two floors, you know, that mostly there are people that live there. We were going to offer life estates, essentially, to new units to those folks. And it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. So they would stay there for the rest of their lives, as far as I know, mm -hmm. and their rent control but so, yeah, so And if it's the one on Ellis Street, if that's it, it's it's yeah. it's pretty bad. I mean, if you no, get, this is there. one and another place. Okay. Well, yeah. as far as I know, there weren't any in other hotels. Just the oh, there is, there is, there is. Okay. Because that that particular hotel was mentioned in the uh, in, in when they first started discussing it. I got I've got the I got the PDF file. Just tell me where it is, because if what the only one I knew about was the uh, Ellis 120 Ellis. Is there any other questions? Just, I'm sorry, I'm slow or stupid or I wasn't paying attention. Um, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> you get a benefit from it qualifying as group housing. What is that benefit? The benefit is that we can, there's a term called affordable by design. In other words, if you can build, um, if you never say cheaper, but if you, uh, uh, more efficient, say, <laughs> units. Uh, uh, and you don't have to do the 25% rear yard, which nobody does anyway. And you, uh, they don't, right? No. I don't, nobody does it. Uh, the open space you can uh, be flexible with. Uh, no parking is required. No parking is required anyway in these. Well, I think for RC4, parking is required. So if you don't have to put in parking, you can build new units at a more affordable rent. And I know 1,600, 1,400 sounds like a lot, but you can't get anywhere close to that in a new unit. Okay. A new unit. Okay, I can see the parking. Is there any? What would be the other reason that it would be more affordable? Well, the, the, you can. We're putting 238 units on two small lots. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the biggest benefit. There's a. A uh, limit to the square footage that is part of the group housing? Uh, as as in RC4, I think, lets you do one unit for every 200 square feet. So for a 10,000 square foot or 8,000 square foot lot, you can so figure that out. You can fit in more units. You can fit in more units. So that makes it more affordable. It makes it more affordable. Okay, it makes it, it, makes it doable. Starting it. And of course, the why isn't like it, is like everybody else. They want to be paid market rate for their land. So we're not getting a deal on the land. Oh, is the why? I guy still owns it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. They still own it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Would love your uh, support if you if you find your way to do it. Well, I'll, I'll get the documents. And I'll go over. Yeah. Let us know. Thank you. Uh, can we get a copy of the sign-in? Do you do that? Uh, yeah. We don't share. It's not my decision, it's my goal. I can't override his decision. Can we pass around the sign-up sheet? Um, it's fine with me. See, so you know what happens? Is we go say we've done community outreach, right. and they say, well, show me who was there and when you did it, and then you can't have a sign-up sheet. All you to do is say, what you were at Marvis' meeting, and take care of it. <laughs> it's, it's on, you're on the agenda, is what I want to interesting. Yeah, but you, don't, you want to yeah. know how many, yeah. how many people who it was? Yeah. There we have. Um, and you will be on YouTube. On YouTube. Great. Constitutes a, a, I can give yeah, you the uh, yeah, yeah. particulars. Uh, okay. At the beginning of the meeting, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. About okay. ten people now. Well, we'll just pass around. If you don't want to sign it, don't sign it. Well, you'll be on YouTube. 
I'll look forward to it. Okay. Go. Oh, okay. Great. Thanks. No. No. Um, so think of it, my officer couldn't make it today, I'm sorry to say. Uh, but please get sidetracked. As far as my report, in the in the Central City Extra, <laughs> There was a large article on the Safe Passage Program, and um, it was pointed out to me by Michael that uh, Kathy Looper had some problems with it. The uh, part of the Safe Passage was put on her property without her authorization, and um, she was concerned about how many other property owners were getting Safe Passage bricks painted on their sidewalk without their authorization. So that I got that article. There's also another one which I don't know exactly how to approach it, but I think it's something that the board needs to look into that as well as David and Susan. Um, the CAC is set up by Supervisor Jane Kim to oversee the tech industry. There's a really good article in the Central City Extra about how its non-functioning function is because it was never given teeth to function by Jane Kim and how half the seats are vacant all the time. And some of the seats have never been filled from the beginning of the organization. And there's no teeth in the, what, the giveaway by the city to the Twitter and those companies, there's no teeth to make them give to us, even though the law says they have to. Oh, I understand. So I think this is something we need to talk about. Do you have another copy of that? And, um, there's a project proceeding environmental yeah. review, which I've been, I tried to get to this meeting, and I'm still trying to get them to uh, the uh, June meeting, which is 1055, 1053, 1055 market. It's a, it's a um, 155 unit tourist hotel that plans to tear down a 106 year old building in the process. Um, it's at Sixth Market. 6th and 7th on market. The entryway will be on Stevenson Street. And the reason I know it's a tourist hotel, they're taking out parking and putting in a 60-foot loading zone for taxi cabs. And they don't have parking either. That's receiving environmental review. Another project receiving environmental review is um, a project at 33 North Fork Street, which is in south of market. And it's a, um, there's two single, two existing lots of 5,975 square feet. They want to build a building with four parking spaces and 11 dwelling units, uh, market rate one, two, and three bedroom housing. There is an issue going through Sacramento um, by Assemblyman Brown or Assemblyman Thurmon to increase SSI grants for those of us on SSI from $8.99 a month to $10.99 a month, um, which, puts, which puts you right at the Medi-Cal threshold for maximum funding allowable to get Medi-Cal. And if you live in an SRO and you don't have cooking facilities, it puts you over the Medi-Cal threshold. Um, and so this is an issue. The uh, Senior Disability Action people are, spo are supporting this issue, and I think this issue needs to be looked at. It's AB 474, and it's going through the um, uh, assembly right now. Did you, they're in favor of it? They're in favor of it. And potentially going to cause a problem with Medi-Cal. Well, it, what the money does, it's a $210 increase, which and would replace the money stolen by Governor Schwarzenegger in 2009, when he reduced SSI incomes by $150 to pay for the state um, budget shortfall. That's okay. basically what it does. And I'm having a hard time. It's, it's good to get money, but it looks like it's a problem with Medi-Cal, which people have to have. Well, I, if, I mean, I have tried getting input from these, this organization. They're telling me all the wonderful things it does. I go, 
but it, what about Medi-Cal? What about housing? What about all these other programs that have threshold maximums? Well, it's under that. And I'm going, but the person at Senior Disability didn't have a clue about SRO residents. They're going, well, you only make $889, and if you're in a hotel like this, you make $973 because you get a restaurant allowance. And a restaurant allowance over and above the 1099 makes us, puts us at uh, $1,183 a month, which gives us a $14,000 a year income, which puts us out of Medi-Cal and out of HUD. And the, 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 this agency doesn't seem to grip that. Or maybe just part of the pandemic. Um, because they deal with people who have kitchens. And I, I can share this. Um, then, let's see. I think you might get a simple chew on that. There's a rule um, by supervisor Tang to allow by conditional use massage parlors in all neighborhoods in San Francisco and would, uh, in effect, Eliminate our massage parlor moratorium in the SU in the special use district of this neighborhood. It sounds a little bit bizarre because we know that there's like human trafficking involved. In yes, it is. Yeah. I mean, the the, the practicality. The, a Chinese is, woman. Right now, the in the one on the board. Code, you cannot have a massage establishment for bisons in an RC district. That's in the planning code. A supervisor Tang's measure doesn't change the planning code. It just says you have to have a conditional use. So there has to be a hearing before the planning department in order to get the permit that you're not supposed to get in the neighborhood. It shouldn't be there, period. That's that issue. Um, also going on, the news board. Let's see. Uh, we've been talking, Michael and I talked about how Sutter Pacific, and, and Curtis and I talked about how Sutter Pacific isn't meeting their, met their mandatory goals for their new hospital in the Tenderloin. In South America, at 899 Valencia, Sutter Pacific is building a um, new, new non-residential use facility. Uh, and they need a conditional use authorization. The hearing is May 21st. Um, because they are uh, establishing a medical services building uh, in a residential district. It's a non-residential use, and it's over 2,999 square feet required by planning code because they want 7,100 square feet, and their plans are at the planning department. And an issue that I am more and more facing I get all these pre-application notices. I've gotten over 250 of these in six months and for the South of Market and the Tenderloin to build housing, taking out 25, 35, 40 year old businesses to put up multi-unit housing buildings. And the, the absolutely shocking, at the rate it's going, there'll be no small businesses in South of Market in 20 years at the rate this housing is doing. Is for being proposed to be built. Okay. You're being eaten by sharks. The last thing I have is. I have a notice of environmental leadership development project for Mission Bay, which is the Warriors project for the hotel, uh, office complex, and the arena. I have a, the um, public resources code, chapter 6.5, starting at section 21178, which authorizes developers like Mission Bay and the Warriors to do a petition to the governor's office 
to get exempt, their project exempt from local review.